works. He's such a handsome, handsome boy with those yellow eyes. Yes, very, very handsome. We have Cass back there who is talking to the ladies. Well, look at um, Rocky. He's like, I, I am perfect. Just don't, don't even look at me. I am majestic. And I am beautiful, and I'm in Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Heavenly Homestead. Breeding season is upon us, and I want to talk about some of the things that have been on my mind that I wish somebody would have told me when I started breeding my goats. So I'm going to present to you one mom, three daughters, and two different dads, and what the dads do for the daughters and I don't want to generalize and say that this is something that would happen if you breed to a good buck or this is what will happen if you breed it to a not so great buck but it's my experience and I think it's gonna be a visual aid for those of you that are starting with goats or are not sure what to look into when deciding when deciding who to breed their does to. So I'm not gonna give you the name of the mom and the name of the buck in the beginning, but I'm gonna tell you at the end because I want you to evaluate the pictures and see for what it is, an adder that I'm trying to explain to you what it's good and what is not so good about it. So in the end, I'm gonna tell you who's the mom of these three girls and who was the dad of each one of those does so you can have a better idea the main differences in the end and why I would breed the mom to this one buck and not to this other one. It's kind of confusing, but in the end, it's going to start to make sense. Okay, so doe number one, which is a daughter out of buck number one, okay? Now, this otter, I'm going to put it on the screen right now, it's the most similar to the mom's otter. And I do love mom's otter, but I know that when I want to breed the mom, I want to see a daughter that will be an improvement on the mom. And in this case, the adder is very similar to the mom. And even though I do like, as I said, the mom's adder, I was hoping that something would be different. Now, the good on this adder is that it's very capacious. So it does have a lot of potential for how much milk I'm gonna get. So that's a good thing. But the bad thing about this is that the udder, once you touch it, it's very meaty. When I'm going to milk, how does that translate to, you know, practicality? When I'm going to milk, this dough, number one, is my least favorite to milk. Not only because her udder is kind of hard and... Uh, it requires a lot of bumping to let the milk down, but also because she loves to hold on to milk just like her mom. And that's a good thing if you are feeding babies to that dough. I mean, if she has babies on her, she's always going to try to hold on to milk for her babies. But even when she doesn't have that many babies, she still tries to hold on to that milk. And so the process of milking her completely out can take me double or triple the time that a easier to milk dough because of that meatier um, udder that makes me have to put a lot more pressure at the time of getting the milk out and also having to bump her a lot more in order to have her let down the milk. So the structure itself, it's good. Uh, the attachments, I think they're good. And it's very much a similar adder to her mom. And this is her third year, so she's pretty much full grown. And she is producing not as much as her mom is producing, but very close. So in that department, it's was really good. Doe number two was the daughter of buck number one. And so, those two first otters are out of the same breeding. They're full sisters, okay? And if you look side by side at these two otters, they're completely different. 
Now, let's focus on the second otter and then we'll compare to otter number one. Now, this otter has the best texture. It is so soft. It is buttery soft. And you are able to feel, once you touch it, you can feel all the ducts where the milk is coming from you can kind of feel the structure of the udder and you can feel how this udder is filling up and coming out she milks out very very easily but because she also has a big orifices so it's easier to milk out more milk at the same time well with the same expression that i would do in another dough that would have smaller orifices so the good side of this adder is it has big orifices, it is very battery soft, she doesn't really hold on to milk a lot, she's very easy to milk out, and honestly, it's a pleasure to milk this girl. Now, the bad side of this adder is, as you can see, it has no medial ligament. So instead of having that ligament in the middle that defines both teats, this one is like a balloon. So, although it has great capacity to produce a lot of milk, it never is compared to her full sister. It's always a little bit less, but without that much work because she milks out so much faster. Now, unfortunately, because she doesn't have that medial ligament, her teats are pointing outwards, which means that with time, it is more likely, if you're not careful, that this doe could get mastitis because her teats are kind of rubbing on her legs constantly. So you're gonna have to be a lot more careful as she grows older but it's but again the buttery soft udder makes it such a dream to milk this dough and at the same time to milk her really fast because of those big orifices now let's do dough number three dough number three is from buck number two so different father from the previous two now if you look at this udder the good things are really a lot more than the bad things about it and let me explain a little bit about that the teat placement uh, it's almost almost where i want it to be it's really good teat placement her udder is buttery soft she milks out oh so easy because again since she's so soft and she lets her milk down, you're able to kind of touch her udder and see where the milk is standing. Then if something is kind of standing there and not coming down, you can lightly massage it and it will come right out. She has big orifices, which makes all the work of milking a lot easier because a lot more milk comes every time you express the milk and she has really good attachments she has side attachments uh, the top attachments it, it could be a little bit better the height of her udder it could be a but it's not bad at all and this is not how her udder is gonna look next year or the year after when she will be considered full-grown the only thing I could say about her udder that I wish it would be different is the capacity. But this dough started with twins and it ended up with just one. So of course, when they are only feeding one baby, they're gonna produce a lot less milk than when they're feeding three, four, or even two. And you can see it in the size of her udder. It is not ginormous, but it's very, um, I would say, it is very on point to a first freshener. I compared, and I'm gonna put it on the screen, this dough with her mom's first freshener udder, who her mom also had twins, and it's very, very much the same as far as size. So there is hope that with subsequent kidding with subsequent kiddings that her udder is going to get bigger another thing that i it makes me think that her udder is going to be a lot more capacious is the fact that her skin is very very soft which in the dairy world means that udder will expand if the skin is hard um 
it means that they're kind of restricted to this specific size of adder and that they're not able to expand from there the softer the skin the more capacity that they have to grow a bigger adder and to fill the adder with milk and which ultimately is what we want from a dairy goat okay now let's talk about who is who the mom that i'm talking about in this situation is clara and you probably already knew that and then the three daughters are number one doe number one that i share her otter i'll probably put it on the screen right now that is mocha's otter then doe number two is annabelle's otter and doe number three is athene's otter Mocha and Annabelle this year are third fresheners and Athene is a first freshener uh, meaning that this is the first time that she had babies. You're probably wondering how they can have the same mom and have others so different and the answer is because of the buck that they were bred to. Annabelle and Mocha were bred to a buck by the name Loki. Now he was pulled and blue-eyed that's why Annabelle is pulled and blue-eyed but uh, he according to what he produced with Clara his utter what he was giving to this girls are not the best and I am not saying it's all completely his fault but I'm saying that a doe can produce a better daughter when bred to the right back but in this case with Annabelle and Mocha or they're both not an improvement of Clara's adder now Loki did improve what I wanted on Annabelle okay and again I did not plan that breeding that Clara was bred to Loki at the previous farm and Arisha from Hansen Everdone Farms she kept both of these girls with the intention of breeding them and then she was going to move and she ended up selling them to me so really I did not have anything to do with Clara being bred to Loki uh, because of course I had no idea about breeding or anything at the time but what I'm trying to say is that if I had to judge what Clara and Loki produce was not an improvement on Clara and even though he did give a softer adder to Annabelle the attachments on Annabelle are not great so we're kind of doing one good thing but at the same time kind of making other things not so great so neither of those girls are an improvement on the mom which in my book if they were bred by me that would have been a fail now let's talk about Athene which is doe number three and the one that I was telling you that has great attachments that she milks super easy she has a buttery soft udder she has big orifices but I only wish that her capacity was better so the combination between Clara and Rocky created the perfect udder and I think that goes to show you that sometimes we give up in certain doughs thinking that they're passing stuff that you don't like. But to be honest with you, in my experience, in my short experience breeding goats and seeing what others have been breeding, genetics is one of those things that is very wild. It could completely be a hit or it could completely be a miss. But I've started to realize that the combination of Rocky's genetics with Clara produced something that I want in my herd. That's exactly what I want. Athene's adder is exactly what I want in my herd. And what I wish that my other girls would have as an adder. I wish that Mocha would have her adder. I wish that Annabelle had her adder. And I'm talking about Athene's adder, not Clara's but a theme's adder. So and all this is to share with you the importance of having a good buck. Now when I got Rocky, I got him because it was a recommendation of Arisha. I wouldn't have known how to pick a buck. So I'm really thankful that she helped me pick him and that she offered him out of Kalani, who, you know, 
I am able to see what he's doing for our herd and how much I want to continue to use him because, and not only that, but get new lines of girls so I can breed those lines to Rocky. I can see the improvement and I can't tell you all the things about Athene because she's just one year old and I'm sure there are going to be things that I'm not going to like as she grows, but what an improvement compared to her sisters. This is really one of those things that will show you how genetics will surprise you and how they can amaze you with good or terrible results. I thought it would be relevant to share this information with you now that we are, you know, during breeding season and kind of show you my personal experience and what I've been able to observe in my own herd. Um, despite the fact that I won't be able to, you know, repeat the breeding of Clara and Loki, which is Mocha's and Annabelle's dad, I still can learn something from that. And I've learned that if I were to own this back Loki, I wouldn't breed Clara or any of my girls to him. I've learned my lesson just by comparing. And I think that um, hopefully I can be Mm, some kind of inspiration to keep these things in mind and if you need to sell your bug this is the time to do it uh, breeding season is upon us there's always new people trying to breed maybe just because they want to sell them as pets maybe because they just want to breed the girls that they already have and they want to keep them in milk uh, and maybe again as I mentioned before you don't want to sell your buck with papers because you don't want your name if it's your buck to continue to produce babies that are not great again that's totally up to you that is something that you have to think about you have to do whatever makes sense to you but I hope that this was helpful and that it will portray how important bugs are. It doesn't matter how good of a doe you have. If you don't have the right buck that will give those great udders and those great structures and those great um, confirmations, then it really you are doing a disservice to your herd by continuing to produce something that you're not happy with. So always, in my opinion, what I do is I want to keep a doling out of each mom and out of each buck that I own because that's the only way to find out if I need to call a buck or if it's you know if it's a buck that is producing so good that I just need continue to repeat that breeding year after year so if you have any experience or if you have any pictures or if you have any comparisons with different bucks that you like to share with me either because they're on your Instagram they're on your Facebook page um, or you just want to email them to me I'm gonna have my email down in the description box so you can email me that I'd be really happy to see what you were able to produce out of your buck and your does and maybe if that doe you brought her to different bucks in your own herd the differences and what you've learned I am amazed by that kind of comparison and again that is making me a lot smarter at the time of picking a buck with each one of my does so if you're new around here and you like this information, you enjoy the channel, you want to stick around, please remember to subscribe, like this video, and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye guys.